following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Very good evening and you're joining us on another episode on Gen XYZ and as you all know this is a program where we talk about contemporary topics or issues relating to the youth. Now as they say there's no point in life where or a time in life where you can start something that you love to do. It's never too early or never too late as long as you start what you like. So if you all can remember like two years ago I had a young a person, a young guest on our show, Yevan David, who has been ranking top 15 amongst the European junior karting uh, industry. So he's here with us today and I'm glad to have you again on the show, Yevan, because it's been two years and you were 13 years old, I presume, when I first spoke to you. And uh, I'm glad that you're here face to face with me and having this discussion and uh, to talk about your achievements in the racing, the karting industry. So thank you again for taking the time. Yeah, no worries. It's always good to be back here in Colombo. It's good to be back on the show again. It's been a while since COVID and I was trapped in Italy kind of on the Zoom meeting with, exactly. the, with the interview. But it's good to be back here and good to be talking to you in person. So tell me, Evan, how has it been now since the last time we spoke and now it's 2023 and where have you come? So it's been a long journey, obviously, mm -hmm. COVID has, has died off a little bit and uh, my personal growth has been improving. I've moved to the KZ category, which is 15 plus instead of 12 to 14, which was the junior category. And I've been faring okay, we're still around the top 15, but instead in the KZ category this time. And we're nearing the end of the season, so we're looking forward to some good results. What was the latest championship that you took part in recently? So the latest championship was the FIA Karting European Championship. Uh, which was the KZ2 category, which I was racing in. It was two rounds and it was a good race. We finished 15th uh, by the end of the championship out of around 90 competitors. So we, it was looking good, but we wanted to have some higher goals and, and achieve them a bit better. So there was stuff we could improve on, but stuff to take in for the rest of the season as well. Yeah, Yavan. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Now, last time I spoke to you, you were in Italy. Now you're back here in Sri Lanka. And you told me that you have plans of moving to Dubai as well. So a little bit about that. Yeah, so obviously when COVID hit, the racing seed kind of died in Asia a little bit. It, it was difficult for Asia to have events like that during COVID. So I went to Europe and I went to Italy and I, I, I had to live there with the Guardian, with my coach and just start racing there. And that's how I was able to evolved myself into the European scene and since then I've been traveling a lot in Europe obviously with COVID uh, getting a bit better now uh, I've been able to travel back to Singapore and stuff and recently this year I found the news that I'm moving to Dubai so me and my family are now based in Dubai where, whereas I am still racing mainly in Europe still. Okay great so you just told me that you got an uplift from the junior category what's the difference there like how are you taking it? So. After the junior category, I was racing in the senior category last year, which was a, a little bit faster, but similar aspects. But this year, I've been racing in the KZ category, which is a completely different um, skill set. You have gears to work with, and it's not a direct drive go-kart. You have front brakes as well. So it's a very different driving characteristic, and it took me a lot of time to get used to it. But with the right mindset, I was able to find my skills and my strengths to adapt to the new go-kart. So what are your skill set? What are your strengths and weaknesses at this point? So I've analyzed myself for a couple of years now and I can tell that my strengths and skills are mainly adapting to what I have and just keeping a cool mind during the weekend even when stuff is not going well. But sometimes my weaknesses can be consistency during driving, you know, just making few errors and I've been working on that for myself on the mental side rather than just blaming the equipment. So that's something I need to work on but my strengths have been improving and I'm going to continue to grow. You call it the OK category, right? Yes. From junior to, to OK. Yes, that's okay. correct. So uh, how has it been like um, racing with your other colleagues? Like, has it been difficult? 
So it's it's been a di bit difficult uh, because obviously the the com the competitiveness is very high, and I have a lot of competitors to go against. But when I usually usually what helps me is when I focus on myself and focus on how I can be fast without comparing to others. That really helps me, and I think that's something I found in myself by the end of last year. And since then, I've been able to compete better and ultimately get better results in and achieve the goals that I put for myself. Have you only been uh, racing in Italy so far? So actually I've been based in Italy by myself for a couple of years now but the European karting goes all around Europe to countries like Italy, Spain, France, Sweden and even Portugal so I've been traveling around quite a lot but most of the races are in Italy because that's where go-karting is the most popular at the moment. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there is this Young Drivers program of McLaren's. Have you any plan of joining that? So there's multiple different uh, academies, including McLaren, Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes, and a couple more F1 teams. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, we haven't uh, contacted anyone yet, or they haven't contacted us. We're just focusing on what we're doing at the moment. But it's definitely in consideration for the future in Formula 3 or even Formula 2 to have these kind of academies to support you. Mm -hmm. But for now, we're just trying to focus on ourselves and see what we can do. Okay, I think I asked this previously also two years ago. What exactly do you like about racing and what's your passion for racing? So has the answer changed throughout the year or is it the same? So it's most of the, the simple characteristics are the same, like just enjoying going fast, feeling the breeze. But also I found a passion in myself to achieve goals that I didn't think I could achieve. And it's basically, in, in, in other words, doing the impossible, reaching it to F1 and making my dreams come true. So that kind of motivation and drive has been pushing me, uh, especially this year. So that passion has really come, come from my heart recently. And I think that's what's changed from then. But most of my passion and obsession for racing is how it's always been, because I've been driving since I was very young and I've always enjoyed it and had no complaints. So I just want to continue doing what I know. Okay, so since you're very young, I believe now you're just 15 years old now? I'm 16 now, actually. 16 this year, okay. Yes. So, what were the biggest challenges that you faced? I'm pretty sure like when you were 13, you didn't have a bigger, the bigger picture of what you were going through. But since you're a little bit older now, what are the main challenges you think that people would go through, any young person who wants to get into the karting or racing industry? So, one of the main challenges is when you have a bad race or even when things don't go your way is just to keep a cool mindset and keep calm we, because m mistakes are ultimately something that can teach you and I found that hard especially last year and the year before because I thought mistakes were just things that can make you worse but I realized it's things that can make you better so I tried to use it in a different mindset and use my failures and mistakes to help me and that's the my main advice to anyone else that's starting or anyone younger is don't get frustrated it's it's going to be okay because mistakes is ulti ultimately what makes you better and so is failures so if you just keep working hard and and use those mistakes as a tool you'll ultimately reach your goals has it ever come to a point where you have gotten extremely frustrated during a race there has been or a demotivated. couple yeah of course there's been a couple of times where you just want to pack up and go home <laughs> but there's you have to use it that energy in a way to okay i've had a bad race or i've had a bad session now I want to get better, I don't want this to happen again. And you kind of use that motivation and that bad energy in a good way, in a positive way. And that's something I found in the last couple of years, which I didn't know before. And that's really helped me recently. Great, so now again, since you're a young racer in the karting industry, trying to get into the racing. So what can you talk about the diversity of the industry? Do you think there's equality? Do you think people accept people from other countries? Or what's your intake on that? Yeah, I mean, obviously recently it's been quite diverse in, in the European uh, karting scene. There's nations from all over the world and it seems quite uh, equal for me. And uh, honestly, the, the atmosphere is really nice because, you know, we all treat each other with respect to a certain amount on track. But off track, we're, we always know that we have respect for each other and we treat each other the same. And obviously there's nationalities from all over the world, for example, Sri Lanka, Japan, or even Croatia, like there's a lot of different countries that are contributing to these events. Great, so now, since you have the experience in Europe and 
you are a Sri Lankan as well. What can you talk about the attention span given to the racing industry here in Sri Lanka? So I think recently because of, uh, obviously I've been flying the flag in Sri Lanka a little bit, there's been a, a more popularity in Sri Lanka. But even before COVID and I started going there, I've seen like there's been a lot of uh, go-karting and a strong racing atmosphere in Sri Lanka. And I've really liked that always because it's, <coughs> even though it hasn't been great in Sri Lanka compared to Europe, there's always been a racing industry, there's always been go-karting events going on. So I think that's what I like about Sri Lanka and what I'm planning to do for the future is I want to take part in some of these events or maybe just gain, help Sri Lanka gain a little bit of popularity for the karting events because the world really needs to know how good they are. Have you gotten any support so, from, uh, so far from Sri Lanka? So yes, of course, uh, I have a lot of support. Obviously, there's different supports in some ways. There's obviously funding support, emotional support, and just motivational. So I think all, all of those factors have been helping me a lot. So I've had a lot of support from Sri Lanka, and honestly, it's, it's been really helping me. So tell me more about your coach and your team. Uh, which ethnicity or what, what kind of people do you work with? So I race for CPP Sport, which mm -hmm. is a French team. And I have a French mechanic, a French team boss. But they're very nice people. And it's very nice to work with. My coach is actually Brazilian, uh, who lives in Italy. And I live with him. And he always gives me advice, little tips to, to help me um, doing the race. Sometimes he can be a bit hard, because you need the discipline to, to help you move forward. But I like working with my mechanic as well. I like the team and we've been working really well so far. How important is it to work as a team when in the karting industry? I think it's one of the most important factors for me because if you're not compatible or working with your team, you're not on the same page. You're not going to move forward. So even when one person's job, when one person is not doing their job well, you just need to lift them up on, off the ground, don't say anything negative and keep moving forward because that's the only way you can get forward as a team by working together. Now Yvonne, you have so, many, so much of experience like uh, going for racing circuits and you know, karting races and all that. So do you still get nervous on the track? Obviously, um, it's been nerve wracking going into a karting race always. You never know what's going to happen. But at the same time, I've I've dug deep on myself and I realized what does make me nervous and I realized it's one, one part of it is not knowing what the result is going to be and that's a fear that kind of controlled me before because I was worrying too much about the result and that's what made me nervous. So of, of course I'm going to be nervous before a race and I will be forever but it's using that nervous energy in a different way and maybe channeling it to be less. So yes, I do get nervous, but in a different way. So the result was what you were nervous about the most? Yes. Before. Is there any other fears that you have in your mind, like when you get on the track? The only thing I think about when I get on the track is just going fast. I have basically when, when, I, when I drive well, I don't think of anything. I'm completely in the present and that's the key mindset I found with myself, just not thinking of anything, not having any thoughts or distractions, just one goal, which is drive fast and drive at the best you can. That's exactly something I believe it's a huge achievement that you need to have in order to have a focused mindset and without, you know, getting distracted by anything else. And, you know, you'll be coordinating with uh, your teammates as well. Exactly. And uh, what advice can you give for the people who wants to join the industry as well again like when they come into the karting what sort of mindset should they have so again like before like just having a cool mindset as well and also taking in advice from professionals like coaches or mechanics or team boss who have been in the industry for a while and even when you make a mistake you just have to let it teach you so that you can grow so of course you're going to need the commitment you're going to need the hard work you're going to need the relentless worth ethic but you have to want it as well the sheer obsession of racing and just any sport or goal is what you need. But when you have fun is when, is when you perform well. So one of the key things when you're starting when you're younger is just to have fun because everything will come when you have a fun, easy mindset. Okay, now when considering racing again, like 
there are so many mistakes that drivers can make, like risky mistakes. Yes. So what do you keep in mind to prevent mistakes like that? So you just have to be a bit contr controlled, but also slow everything down. If, if everything's coming to you fast and you're panicking, you're going to make a mistake. So sometimes when I have that feeling, I talk to myself and say, hang on, why are we panicking? Just relax a little bit. And then you start to drive more calm, don't make too many mistakes, and then you're able to take those risks which pay off. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is your favorite memory you have so far in your racing career? Um, I'd say one, one of my best memories was the FIA Motorsport Games last year when I won the silver. That was a great memory and after quite a tough year to seal it off with the, with the podium made, made me really happy and it, was, it just paid off for all the hard work that year and all the mistakes and all the setbacks really put me forward in that moment. But of course there's been memories in the past but I'm sure that my best ones are yet to come. Which uh, team or um, how would you describe the competition in this area? So the competition is quite high because you have teams from all over the world like Italy, France, Spain and a lot of European ones. But there's more than about 10 teams in the karting paddock so there's a lot of competitiveness and of course there's going to be some differences in the teams, sometimes differences in the engine, in the chassis, but you have to work with what you have in your team to fight against the others. So I'd say the competitive, competitiveness is quite high, but you just have to work with your team to see what you can do. All right, thanks Ivan. So we have more to discuss, but before that we have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we were in discussion with Yevan David and uh, I think Yevan in the first segment you spoke about yourself, about your future, what you plan about doing uh, in the karting industry in the future as well. So a little bit about your future championships. Now you said that you are preparing for the world championship. So tell me how that works, how the training is going on, where the tournament is going to be held. So the, term, the, the race will be in Wackersdorf, Germany, which is a bit of an unknown area, but the track is, is a really nice track. And the World Championship will be one race, one weekend, and wherever you finish is where you classify, basically. But uh, for preparation, we have one race, which is the DKM race, which is two weeks before that. But other than that, we don't have a lot of practice because we don't have a lot of time. So I'm just working on myself at home, you know, doing some workouts. But in terms of driving time, we don't, we have limited time. So that's, that's what's been going on. Will that be effective in your performance so, when you don't have uh, racing time practice? Yeah, it, of course, more driving time is, is needed. Mm. But we do have about uh, two or three days of practice before, before the race. So I think that's plenty of time for me. And one of my strengths is adapting as well. So I think I should be okay with that. Whenever you come to Sri Lanka, do you have practice sessions here too? Well, usually when I come to Sri Lanka, most of the time it's just for holiday, you know, to see the family again. But usually most of my practices are in Europe because that's where the, the tracks I'll be driving on. It's similar conditions, you know, the temperature could be different, the humidity could be different. So that's why I usually keep my training sessions there. Okay, great. Now, again, since you're a young racer, how do you manage practice time, training time with your education as well? So it's a, it's a little bit difficult because mm -hmm. obviously uh, when you practice it takes up a whole day and usually when you do a few test days it could take up to a week. But in terms of my education I'm doing online school which is what I've been doing for about two and a half years now. So I've gotten used to that and I'm soon be taking my O level soon. So I've just been balancing my racing with education online. So of course that's a bit difficult, you, ha you have to have a lot of time management, but I've been doing it for a while now and it suits me okay. 
how important is it for you to have a support system behind you like your parents obviously need to be the backbone of you and you know pushing you for your success as well and you need some financial support as well so how important is it for a racer to have that so it's very important because you have to be funded for pretty much all your career until you reach formula one but i know my parents are doing everything they can and they're supporting me with the way they can and they're not doing they're not putting a lot of pressure on me they're not demanding a lot from me so they're doing everything they can and that support is everything you need going forward of course the financial support is what you need as well but my parents are doing everything they can so i'm sure it'll be okay okay so when it comes to financial support do you uh, mainly bank on your sponsors as well yeah of course sponsors is one of the key things that you need going forward in in stuff like formula 3 formula 2 and and actually formula 4 even because you need these funds to to help you reach to F1 because of course we know the racing industry can be quite expensive and once you get to Formula 1 you are already funded by the teams but to get there you need those sponsors which is key. Mm -hmm. Around what time are you, uh, what period are you planning to join F4? Um, so I'll be joining Formula 4 around the start of next year. My karting career is about to finish by the end of this year and I'll be doing a lot of Formula 4 practice, a lot of Formula 4 testing during the winter, which is around October, November, December, and I'll start racing in January in F4 UAE. But I'm not sure which team I'll be with yet, it hasn't been confirmed, but I'm 99% sure I'll be racing in Formula 4 next year. Great, and I'm pretty sure like all of us will be looking forward to that as well. And you said you will not know which team you'll be racing for, is it? Do you have a preferred team that you would like to join? So I'd say the level is quite similar in, in Formula 4, so there wouldn't be a specific team I would, to, would prefer to join, to be honest. But in particular, I would like a top three team, obviously, because sometimes the equipment can help you. So no, I don't have a particular team in mind. Okay, so when considering racing here in Sri Lanka, do you think that we as a nation is giving prominence enough to this sport? Yeah, I mean, I think there has been a lot of interest in, in racing in Sri Lanka, but it, compared to uh, the rest of the world, it seems like we're a bit behind, you know, because the events aren't very international, they're, they aren't very big. But it's nice to see that they're still happening, so I would like to, to help that a little bit in the coming years and maybe gain popularity for, for Sri Lanka in terms of, in terms of the events. Mm -hmm. So now since you have experience in driving so many championships, uh, what is your favorite track? So what was your favorite race? Rather? Of course, I've been to a lot of tracks in the world, but actually one of my favorite tracks is the Bandara uh, racing circuit. Really? I, Here yes, in Sri Lanka? In Sri Lanka, okay. because I actually did a race five years ago in the cadet category, which is the 8 to 12 year old age group. And honestly, it was one of the best tracks I've ever been on even with all the tracks I've been in Europe in Asia it's it's really it's really nice the banking the the corners I really love it to be honest so you think we have a racing track that is up to the international standard absolutely it's it's past standards I mean there's many tracks in Europe and even in Italy that are worse than the, the track in Bandara Gama so I think we have a track that can attract a lot of people so then you're telling me that we have a good racing track also and yeah. where do you think Sri Lanka is lacking at this point to give prominence to this sport? So it's a little bit difficult to say, there's a lot of factors but I think it's just an, Sri Lanka is unknown for motorsport mm -hmm. uh, to the rest of the world so if we can somehow gain popularity for the rest of the world and show them that there is racing in Sri Lanka then that would attract a lot of people. What was the worst memory that you had or are there instances where you had to face some critics? Um, in general, in my career, I've had a lot, of, a lot of setbacks, but that's what shaped me to move forward. But there isn't a particular bad memory that I remember because usually I don't want to remember it. <laughs> but yeah, usually during the setbacks, I, I don't have a lot of critics because, you know, it's, it's not very nice to hear them. And I try to just focus on myself and move forward without having a lot of the bad memories again. Okay, what's the most important thing that you have learned throughout your career? I'd, I'd say just to keep calm and, and have fun because you don't need anything to worry about because it's only going to make you slower. So just keeping focus, keeping calm and moving forward. 
Okay. So as a sportsman, as a racer, mm -hmm. can you share a little bit about your routine, what you go through, your training schedule, the time you allocate for your studies and etc.? So it's obviously different on different days because every day I'm pretty much doing something different. But usually I try to do at least one to two hours of studying each day, whether it's assignments or just general studying, I do, I do the, the education part as well. But then in terms of working out, um, maybe four to five times a week, uh, maybe one or two hours a day, you know, just focusing on my body, on myself. But what I've gotten into recently is sort of mental training and it's a, it's very different to do that because not a lot of people do it but usually just 10 to 15 minutes of meditating each day has really brought inner peace to me a little bit and like helped me to be in the present and that's helped me on track with keeping concentration and keeping focus so I think one of the main things above physical um, workouts and stuff is mental training and that's what I usually do during a day on top of my education um, my, my physical workouts and just general free time. Okay, so mm -hmm. how would you describe your driving style? Is it more strategic or how, how would you describe it? I'd say I'm quite aggressive as, as a driver. I, I like to, you know, just take risks that other drivers wouldn't take and, and to be honest, I, I don't like to be like a boring driver who doesn't take a lot so of risks. So basically stuff, like so. Max Verstappen? <laughs> in a way, uh, he's, he's quite extreme with, with the aggressiveness, yeah. but and then you see Lewis Hamilton who's always focused and, and makes little errors, even if yeah. he complains a bit. So I try to be in between both of them because I think for sure they're one of the best drivers in the world. So mm -hmm. I'm quite to the aggressive side, but also to the calm side and not so crazy. So you follow Max Verstappen's driving style, but you also have Lewis Hamilton as your idol. Yeah, I, I think there's a there's a lot of drivers, even if you don't like them, that have good driving styles and good mindsets. So I'd say Verstappen's, you know, driving, little errors, very ag aggressive. He takes and he, he owns his part of the track. Where, but sometimes that could get you into difficult situations and maybe a couple of crashes like we saw in 2021. But then there's Lewis, who's also very focused and stuff. He's quite calm. He doesn't take as many risks as Verstappen. So that's why being in the fine line and like taking these, well, taking these mindsets to help you improve from yourself rather than just rating them as a driver. Okay, so do you try to follow an idol's uh, style of driving or do you try to create your own? I don't follow one particular driver, for example, I don't want to just be Lewis Hamilton mm -hmm. like that. I try to take it different different ways. For example, how Leclerc is fast in qualifying and Verstappen has crazy race pace and Lewis has multiple world champ championships. So it's just what I've been trying to do is find the characteristics of how they've done it and just taking in these different facts to put into myself and creating my own personality rather than just being like another driver. And not even in Formula One, but in NBA, NBA as well, I've been looking to like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and trying to see how their mindsets have helped them. Because in the end, the Formula One or NBA or any other sport, it is a sport and the athlete's mindset is similar across different sports. So I've been trying to take a lot of different athletes and see how I can create my own personality. Great, that's good to know. And so, um, since you spoke about NBA, so have you yeah. ever had the passion of doing basketball as well? So actually, I've been uh, starting to watch NBA recently, like the last couple of years, and I I've always been stuck stuck to racing for the last eight or nine years. So I know I've already made up my, my mind, but it has been in my mind a little bit consideration taking basketball or NBA. It would be very cool, but for now, I think I'm fully focused on racing but mm -hmm. at the same time I watch a lot of NBA just to take a different athlete's mindset and see how it can help me in my racing. How were you exposed to racing in the first place because you were really young and I'm pretty sure you had like options laid out to you there's basketball there's tennis there's swimming yes. but racing is something out of the blue so how did you join that? So actually uh, I started racing when I was seven years old but before that I was doing a lot of different sports like football basketball, tennis, swimming. I was doing a lot of different sports, but I liked it, but I, I didn't really have the passion for it. But one day my dad took me to the go-kart track in Singapore and I started driving for the first time and I really liked it. I found my passion 
and from then we got our own go-kart. I started practicing every day when I was seven years old and I started racing in 2015 and that's, that's how I found my passion for racing. All right, Yevan, so we have to go into another short commercial break. Mm -hmm. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and this is our last segment and we were in discussion with Yevan David. So Yevan, now we were talking about your career, about karting, about racing, about you getting into Formula 1 and uh, F4 in the recent future. Um, just in case, if an individual or, for, or a racer does not get the opportunity of joining F1, are there other avenues that they can follow in the racing industry or the racing sport? So of course in racing it's not just Formula 1, there's different categories like GT or Le Mans or LMP2 but one of my main goals to do other than F1 would probably be endurance racing which is really competitive, they do races that are 24 hours, 12 hours and 6 hours long and one of the most best races of the year is the 24 hours of Le Mans. So these endurance championships can be quite intense and I think that would be a possible route for me if I were not to go in F1. And also another category which is starting to pick up is Formula E, which is the, an all-electric racing series, which is also open wheel. And I've seen a lot of drivers move to Formula E from Formula 2 who aren't able to make it to Formula 1 and it seems to be quite competitive this year. Uh, just a little intro or some information about endurance racing. Have mm -hmm. you ever taken part in any of uh, those kinds of races? So I have done a 12-hour endurance race mm -hmm. in a go-kart four-stroke in Dubai. But in terms of the endurance racing in cars, I haven't done that yet because I'm still a bit too young. But there's championships, which is the World Endurance Championship or WEC. And then there's also the European Le Mans series. And these uh, endurance championships can go anywhere in the world. Like this, they go across all the tracks and even most of the F1 tracks, to be honest. So I will be looking forward to taking part in that. But for now, I've only done one endurance race and I know what it's like. And that was 12 hours long. Correct. How was it like? What was your experience like? Oh, what's the nutrition that you had to take in order to, you know, hold on for that long? So, of course, you have to be hydrated because mm -hmm. it, it can be hot conditions, but also just having the energy with um, bananas or, or a lot of fruits or protein bars even just to have the energy. But you don't want to eat anything heavy because you could feel quite bloated uh, during the race and stuff. But in terms of enduring for 12 hours long, I mean, it's during the day. It doesn't go into the night so much. So it, it's not too bad. You just have to stay rested so that you're focused when you drive. And you have to work with your teammates as well because there's four people racing and you have to make ground when it's your stint. But in terms of the 12 hour race, it's, it's not too bad because the 24 hour race, obviously you have to drive in the night as well. So that can be quite tough and exhausting. Uh, what was the biggest challenge you faced in that? What was the uh, most difficult thing that you had to do? So I think, well, even though it was only 12 hours, I was still quite tired because you have to drive for about three hours in total. So I've, I guess just staying rested and staying focused and for driving for so long, it can be so exhausting in the heat as well. So just staying concentrated and also being hydrated to, to help you focus a lot. Is the training different for these kind of races as well? So I only did one endurance race, so mm -hmm. my training didn't change so much because it was just for one race. But I'm pretty sure the training is different because you have to endure more, so the workouts will be longer, you know, you have to do more aerobic like running or rowing. So yes, the workouts will be quite different to the normal workouts that Formula One drivers do or other drivers who aren't doing endurance racing. Okay, Ivan. So now when thinking of the bigger picture of getting into F1, yes. I think you have a good idea about A to Z on where you need to go. So will you be able to explain a little bit to our viewers who are watching this or the people who are interested in joining racing as well? What pathway should you take? Like from where do you start and where do you end? What can you expect? So it's a long journey all the way to Formula One, but Obviously, when you're around eight or nine or even 10 or 11, this, it's never too late to start. You have to start in the mini category, which is around eight to 12 
age group, then you move into the junior, the senior, which is what I did, and then you move into Formula 4, which is the first rank in, in the car section. And you want to do around a couple of years of Formula 4, just get used to being in a car rather than a go-kart, because it's, it's quite different. And then you move to F Formula 3 and Formula 2, and obviously it can be quite difficult because there's only 30 or 20 drivers on the grid compared to go-kart where it can exceed even 90 drivers. So you have to be um, quite funded to, to race in these categories, but also you need to have the skill and the talent to, to push through because teams are going to want to pick you up if you're talented and you're showing speed. And once you get to Formula 3 and Formula 2, there's going to be F1 teams watching you and wanting to take you in for, for upcoming years. So uh, you're, the main job you need to do when you're in Formula 2 or Formula 3 is just to perform, finish in the top five, win, win a few races, even win the championship, and you'll have a good chance to make it to Formula 1. Have you ever had your idols watch you race? Um, not yet, because obviously I'm still in go-karting and mm -hmm. uh, most of my idols obviously are in Formula 1. So but you did mention that you uh, met Lewis Hamilton as well, right? That's correct. Uh, I did meet Lewis Hamilton, but not at a race event. Mm -hmm. I was, it was actually at the Singapore Grand Prix in 2016. I met him there. But in 2017, Verstappen Max Verstappen did come to one of my races. I'm not sure if he watched like me because obviously there's a lot of drivers there. Yeah. But yeah, I guess they have wa watched one of my races. But in Formula 3 and Formula 2, those races are in the same weekend as Formula 1. So a lot of the F1 drivers actually do watch Formula 2 and Formula 3. And they interact with the drivers sometimes. So I think in a couple of years, my idols should be watching me. I hope at least. <laughs> yeah, we hope so too. Yes. And uh, when a person is getting into karting or racing, what is the first step that they need to take? How do they get into this industry initially? So initially, it's a bit difficult because mm -hmm. racing is it, it's almost its own world. So to enter the racing world, well, there's Normally the racing teams are at, at a local racing track or mainly in Europe to be honest. So you'd want to be in Europe uh, preferably. But if you were to just talk to the team manager, talk to the team boss about joining the team, they would be able to pick you up and then they provide you with the go-kart and, and the tools to, to continue. What was your <laughs> first race like? So my first race was in 2015. It was a long time ago, but I can remember just enjoying being in the race, having fun. And, you know, just, I was very young, so I was just having fun. I didn't care what position I was. Obviously, I wanted to win because I was young. But it was, it was a very fun experience. And I remember it being my first race. I remember telling to myself, OK, I'm the youngest. I'm just going to go and have some fun. And ultimately, I finished, I think, seventh. And, but there was only about 10 drivers, so I didn't do so well. But I had a lot of fun because your first time is always the most fun. Okay, so when considering about awareness about racing here in Sri Lanka, um, I don't think a lot of people do know about the sport here in Sri Lanka, like compared to international nations. Uh, do you have any plans of, you know, creating awareness through social media or, or doing some campaigns of any sort to just make people aware that there is something like this and to receive the support that you want from your sponsors as well? Right now, I've been focusing on myself and just trying to get the results in, in my races. But I really want to, in the future, to um, try to pick up the popularity of racing in Sri Lanka. So obviously, sh social media is one tool. I'm try I would like to try and promote it, you know, like, and, and eventually maybe it could attract a few sponsors for the circuit and just gain popularity in total. There'll be more visitors, more people driving there, and even more professional drivers arriving. So one of my goals in the future is to gain popularity for racing in, in Sri Lanka, but definitely, definitely social media is a tool to, to help me do that. Uh, another question I would say that parents are concerned about is how the child's education is affected by this. If a person is joining the racing sport, you need to commit like most of your time into practicing, into the championships and into your training. So how did your parents deal with that? Do you think that your education would be affected with your commitment with racing? So it was obviously a difficult decision for them to make for any parent. But uh, during the first four or five years of me racing, it was it was when I was still quite small and it was before COVID time. So I was still able to go to school, travel for a race and come back to make it for school. So I wasn't missing too much school time. But 
after COVID happened, it all changed because you weren't able to travel as much. I needed to stay in Europe a lot. So that's when I switched to online school. And it can be difficult because you obviously you have to balance, but I'd say it can affect your education a little bit because you don't have the face-to-face -face teaching that a normal teacher would do. You're spending less hours on studying and, and taking in information. So it would affect a little bit, but by the time you get to GCSEs or O-levels or A-levels, you would be focusing primarily on education a bit more than racing or maybe level. So in that, in that sense, it wouldn't be affected so much. But in terms of when you're still a kid, it can be affected. Does it ever bother you that you didn't get the actual school life experience than a normal child? I've, I've actually thought about this a bit and mm -hmm. I miss my friends from school quite a lot. And I look back on myself and I wonder what if I had like the normal school life and went to school until 18 when I graduated. And yes, it, it does bother me a little bit sometimes that I'm missing out on, you know, studying with my friends, having that school experience. But I'm, I'm happy because I'm sacrificing that for my racing life and a racing career. So I know what I'm sacrificing is definitely worth it. And um, I think we are reaching the end of our program as well. But for that, um, do you think it's important for all race drivers to become a role model for young people? Absolutely. When you're reaching the end of your career or it could even be the middle of your career when you're around 20 or 25 you have to set um, a good personality and a, and a good image for yourself because you don't want to be hated by by critics or even even young people you want to inspire and of course be a role, role model for them and people to look up to you so that's what one of my goals is to be, become a role model in the future because I want to inspire a lot of young kids just like how Lewis Hamilton did for me. So I, mm -hmm. I would like to have that in myself too, because it's important to be a role model. Even when you have to focus on yourself, you could be helping a lot of others. Okay, so as my final question to you, Yevan, is there any inspirational message that you can give to the viewers who are watching this and for the people who have an interest in joining this racing sport? So I'd say one of my most important messages is don't give up and just keep trying. Failures are only going to make you better, mistakes are only going to make you better, and just keep the obsessive work ethic and you're going to make it. Well, uh, this was our program, Yevan, and I'm so glad to have met you face to face also after two years through the conversation we had via Zoom as well. And I wish you all the very best for the future as well for your world championship. And keep upholding the Sri Lankan flag for us as well. Thank you all very, very much. Best. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. And that was our episode on Gen X, Y, Z. We will be back again next week with another topic or issue relating to the youth. And just in case you can watch us on air, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Stay safe and have a good night.